guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you Amen. So you can see the relationship, you know, that um, in Psalm 91, why he tells us that truth is a shield and a buckler. These people who love truth so much they won't depart from it, they're going to be protected. Psalm 91 is for them. Psalm 91 is not what we for what we loosely call the church. Um, they have been playing the harlot. But these people who love the truth and won't depart from it, they will be protected. They are under his wings. They have his shield and buckler. Psalm 91 is for them. In verse 5 it says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Thou shalt not be afraid. You know, we're we're told in... Psalm 23, you've probably known it by heart, you know, that um, that we can go through this valley of the shadow of death. In verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And that was a psalm of David, a man who was after God's own heart, Right? Obviously, if we're after God's own heart, we love His truth, we want to be obedient to Him, we live to be seen of Him and not to be seen of men. We are forsaking, we are as priests um, sacrificing our old fleshly, beastly self on the altar of trials and troubles and tribulations. And uh, we're forsaking the world, we're Loving sanctification, separation from the world unto God. And uh, God is going to be our help. You know, when a person has fear in the midst of the shadow of death, it's usually because they don't really love God. You know, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's a person who loves the truth. They're protected. God even protects the mind of a person who's going through Um, dangerous times upon this earth. We're headed towards, at this particular point, the most dangerous times in history. Wouldn't you like God to keep you with faith and boldness and fearlessness through this time? Well, if you seek Him with all of your heart, He will do that. He will protect your mind. You will have on the helmet of salvation the knowledge of the fact that you've been saved from all of these fearful things that are coming upon the world. He tells us, fear not. I think it's in our last meeting I mentioned that I've been told, but I don't. I never have taken the time to figure it out, that um, 365 times we've been told not to fear in the Scriptures. That's one for every day, right? And so he tells us, even though I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. A person who is confident that the Lord is with them, you know, is fearless, right? And, you know, does everybody have that confidence? No. And many people lose it at the last moment even. And the reason they're losing it is either because they're in idolatry with a false Jesus, a false God, or because they their heart condemns them. And so they don't really believe that God's on their side. And, uh, you know, in First Peter chapter 3, listen to this, verse 6. Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose children you now are, that is, children of Abraham, if you do well and are not put in fear by any terror. Not put in fear by any terror. Terror. Fear comes to separate you from God. The person that fears um, is obviously not made perfect in love, that we know that. But the person that fears is one who believes what the curse says, believes what the devil says, believes in the threat that they see with their eyes. Um, whether it be in darkness or in light, they believe it. And uh, so fear is the very opposite of faith, and faith is 
faith in the Psalm 91, the preservation that the Lord has given to us, and uh, fear is faith that you are under the curse and that it will take you when it comes through, right? But, but the person who is full of faith and has hidden under God's truth, they're going to be sheltered under the wings of the Lord when these terrible plagues come through. Do you know that the plagues are mentioned in, uh, in Exodus there? Are, some of them are not really physically plagues, but um, they are judgments upon Egypt. And um, in any one of those, uh, in Psalm 91, um, God's people, God's true devoted people, are going to be protected. Uh, Revelation, you know, some people say, well, you know, they they kind of shelter their fear, they protect their fears, and they don't really think about them as sin. But Revelation 21 and 8 is very plain. It says, but for the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable. See, these lead out in this list here. Fearful and the unbelieving. The abominable and the murderers and the fornicators. We don't generally put fearful and unbelieving in the category of the murderers, do we? The fornicators and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars. Their part shall be in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Think about it, folks. These things are offensive to God. Fearful and unbelief is offensive to God. It is a sin. It is a sin that's ranked with these other sins. It's one that will separate you from God forever. And uh, we need truth. We need to fill our heart with truth. Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word. You need the faith of God. You can pray in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith, we're told. you know, Another way to receive faith. The main way that you receive faith is through loving the truth, seeking the truth, putting it into your heart until it becomes a part of your heart and a part of your vocabulary. You know, Romans 10 and 10. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In the midst of the fiery trial, when you are threatened by the curses of this world, no matter what kind of plague they could be, Will you confess him then? That's the whole point. Will you confess his promise then? Will you confess Psalm 91 is yours? Will you confess that you are hidden uh, in the secret place of the Most High, as we spoke about last time? It, because in the trial, is in your confession, is the only way that salvation is made complete. You know... Um, Faith without works is dead. You can say that you believe, but in the trial, when you're tried to see if you believe, it needs to be coming out of your mouth and it needs to be in your feet because that's what's going to protect you from the curses of this world. Supernaturally, God and His angels, all by the Holy Spirit, will send forth His protection to you if you will confess Him in the midst of the trial. If when the plague is all around you and people are dying on your right hand and on your left, as actually it says right there in Psalm 91, a thousand shall fall by thy side, ten thousand on thy left hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Can you say that? It shall not come nigh me. Can you say that? Because you believe in this, because you know you're seeking after God and your heart is not condemning you and your heart believes in the promise of God and your mouth is confessing unto salvation, can you do that? Well, you need to. You need to know that you can do that now. All right? Well, uh, I think I'll look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2 for a moment. Verse 14. Since then the children are sharers in flesh and blood. He also himself in like manner partook of the same. That is the same flesh and blood. That... Through death he might bring to naught him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. So, by Jesus' death, he brought to naught the power of the devil. This is to deliver us from any kind of fear. 
Now, I, I can say that overwhelming majority of Christianity doesn't believe this. They do not believe it. They don't care what it says there. They don't believe it. That Jesus actually died in order to deliver us from any kind of fear of death. If your conscience does not bother you, you can have bold faith in God. You can believe His promises. Make sure you have confessed your sins and you're in right standing with the Lord. You have confessed and forsaken and repented, which means it's change of your mind. You're no longer going to run after those things. You're no longer going to live in the lusts of your flesh. You're going to serve God by a change of your mind. And with the heart, me believing his promises that you have been delivered from these sins and from this curse. And with the mouth, you're going to confess it. And if you confess that, you can also confess that uh, your God will protect you. The curse of death is upon the sinners. You can forsake your sins and turn to God and trust in Him, even if you're not perfect. That's what the blood covering is all about, right? And um, that He might deliver them through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. See, what puts people in bondage is the fear of death. They're forced, because of the fear of death, to do things that are totally contrary to faith in God. They're in bondage to those things because they fear death. Yet the Lord came to deliver us from the fear of death. And we are free from the fear of death because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And um, also I'd like to read a little piece of um, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. Verse 14 it says, For we are become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence firm unto the end. While it is said, Today, if you shall hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Do you hear his voice? Do, do your brethren tell you of his voice? Do they tell you of his promises, of things that he has said? Do, are these the things that you're humbling yourself to? Or... Are you hardening your heart because you have ulterior motives and you want to do your own thing and go your own way? Well, he's warning you here. Okay, It says, For who, when they heard, did provoke? Nay, did not all they that came out of Egypt by Moses? And with whom was he displeased forty years? Was it not with them that sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness, they obviously had no protection, right? But they were murmuring and complaining. They were not speaking the word of God. They didn't believe his promise of their provision and of their protection, and so they didn't have it. And they died because of their murmuring and complaining. He says, as you have spoken in my ears, so shall it be unto you. And they died. They didn't enter into his rest. In verse 18, To whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that were disobedient. The word is apithia. It means two things. It means disobedience and unbelief. Can you imagine in the scriptures that the, the same word there represents both of those things? And, you know, it's, it's obvious that if you are unbelieving, you will be disobedient. But if you are believing, that's where obedience comes from, because then God works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. So actually, both words are correct here. See? And we see that they were not able to enter into what? The rest, which is ceasing from your own struggling, striving, trying to save yourself, um, all those things, you know, because of unbelief or disobedience. Let us fear, therefore, here's something we should fear. This is the thing we should fear. Let us fear, therefore, a promise being left of entering into his rest. Any one of you should seem to have come short of it. So so don't forget God's promises. Don't waste your time with the world. You, there's only a little time left now for you to draw near to the Lord, for you to put the word of God in your heart and for you to be bold in the faith. Start exercising your faith for things now. Start trusting God for things now. He has given promises that cover every one of your needs. Worry less and less about taking care of yourself and more and more about walking by faith in Him. Uh, and if you want to fear anything, fear that you're leaving out His promises. 
You know, don't leave out God's promises. That's what he's telling you here. They are your truth. They are the shelter of his wings. They are your shield and buckler. They are what will protect you from the plagues that are coming upon this world. So, in verse 2, For indeed, we have had good tidings preached unto us, even as also they. But the word of hearing did not profit them, because it was not united with faith with them that heard. For we who have believed do enter into that rest, even as he has said, As I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest, though the works were finished from the foundation of the world. The works were finished. We just enter into the works of God that God has already done from the foundation of the world. From the beginning, he spoke what would come to pass. It's coming to pass. Well, is it coming to pass with you? That's the only point. It is coming to pass. God's word will prevail. You know, he sent his word and healed them. His word is our shield and buckler. It is our truth. It is our protection. But we need to mix faith with that so that we be the the righteous vessels through whom God will overcome this world with, right? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, Going back to our text here in Psalm 91, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the last part of verse 5. It says, I'll read the whole verse again. It says, I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Well, there's a couple of ways that the Lord speaks about the arrow, like Psalm 64 is is one way, a spiritual way, in which God speaks of the, the arrow that we should not fear. Let me read that to you. matter of fact, I'm going to read the whole psalm to you. It says, Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. You know, if you fear the enemy, you don't believe what God has said in Psalm 91, right? But he's asking for help to conquer his fear here. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of evildoers. Oh boy, the world... I don't know if you're noticing, but there are evildoers everywhere. They're coming out of the church right and left. Praise God for that. He is bringing a separation. That is good. But, he goes on to say, From the tumult, in other words, hide me from the tumult of the workers of iniquity, who have wet their tongue like a sword, and have aimed their arrows even Bitter words. You know, he tell he tells us in Psalm ninety one not to fear the arrow that flieth by day, and he and of course we we know that people are going to speak against the righteous, but we're not to fear their bitter words, what they can do to us, right? And have aimed their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret places at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil purpose. Many times they gather together against you. Your enemies will come together against you and encourage themselves in an evil purpose. They commune of laying snares privily. In other words, they're trying to trap you. You remember when the Pharisees came together to try to trap Jesus in his words, right? And, of course, he knew by the Holy Spirit exactly what they were doing, and the Holy Spirit gave him wisdom to answer. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who will see them? They search out iniquities. We have accomplished, say they, a diligent search. And the inward thought and the heart of everyone is deep. But God will shoot at them. With an arrow suddenly shall they be wounded, so they shall be made to stumble, their own tongue being against them. You know, what, you know whatever they sow, they're going to reap. And, of course, you don't want to fight fire with fire. You don't want to wrestle with flesh and blood, or what you sow, you'll reap, you see. So God tells us how to fight with these people, and it's not in the flesh. 
all that see them shall wag the head, and all men shall fear, and they shall declare the work of God, and shall wisely consider of his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord, and shall take refuge in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. So obviously, if we serve the Lord, and uh, not our flesh, and not retaliate the way the world does, the Lord will defend us, he will use us as an example, and people will be brought into the kingdom. That's what he's saying here. My Lord Jesus